I work as a security guard for a company that takes jobs no one else will. Part 3 Here are some more stories about places that I was stationed at and the ones I heard from other guards in the company. A lot of these guards are dead now and I reckon the same could happen to me at any moment on my shift. So in case there's a lack of updates, most likely something happened to me. So one memorable experience I have had, and not in a good way, was when I was stationed at a local park with another guard. The park wasn't too big, had a playground, running track which wound in a circle around the park itself, and a tennis court. Everything else around were thick trees, so following the running track gave me a very convincing impression of being in a forest away from civilization. My coworker and I were starting our shift in the park at 7pm and would end it at 7am. There was a tiny guardhouse near the entrance which we would spend most of our shift in, and every two hours we would go patrolling around the park, very strictly following the running track where the path was illuminated. We were given a heavy duty flashlight and a backup torch in case the main one runs out of power. HQ issued an order that if we found any burnt out light on our path, we were to retreat to the guardhouse immediately and let maintenance know about it in the morning. Under no circumstances were we to step into the dark patch of the track. This one night, I was doing my rounds around the park when all of a sudden I hear my partner's voice. He simply shouted, Hey, help me! from a distance. I couldn't tell where it was coming from, so I called out to him, moving my beam across the trees beyond the path. Now, the light we were given is able to penetrate darkness so well that you could see at least 100 meters in front of you, but when I illuminated the area my partner's voice was coming from, there was nothing. Moreover, the voice seemed to change the positions it was coming from. He yelled again, Hey, help me! I called him once more, asking him to tell me where he was, but there was no response. I didn't dare wander into the darkness, especially with no signs of him anywhere, heavy duty light or not. Then my partner yelled for help again and I realized something which made the hairs on the back of my neck stand straight. His cries for help were on a loop, always saying the same thing, same intonation, same length of pauses. I even looked at my watch and sure enough I was right. Call for help, 8 second pause, call for help. 8 second pause. I then realized how suddenly quiet everything was. Usually the park was somewhat loud at night, crickets, owls, etc. Now it was so silent I could hear my own heart thumping. I turned around very slowly and walked out of there, doing my best not to sprint as my partner's looping cries for help persisted almost halfway until I was back at the guardhouse. When I finally got back, my suspicion was confirmed and my partner was there, visibly confused at what I had just told him. We called HQ to report suspicious activity and in no less than 5 minutes a vehicle pulled up at the entrance. An intervention unit emerged, which was essentially an armored and heavily armed team sent in in case of emergencies. I was questioned by the team leader for the next hour, while the others went to the scene where I had heard the voice of my coworker. My partner and I were escorted out of the place and the next following morning we were told that the park contract was voided by the company and we no longer needed to go there. I don't know anything else though, because right after that I returned to my original post back at HQ. I spoke to a former intervention unit member who had worked for the company for over 5 years. He said that some of the shit he had seen was unimaginable and he was willing to share some with me. For instance, this one time they got a call from a residential building they were securing that there were strange noises coming from one of the rooms. The team arrived on the scene and questioned the guard who reported the incident. Apparently, his job was to make sure no one entered room 416. He explained that the room itself was unoccupied, but that noises would be heard constantly between 2 and 3 am. Usually these noises would include childlike giggling loud footsteps, bouncing of something on the floor, etc. The residents learned to ignore the noises, but this one old lady, Mrs. Rogers, managed to get in, which he saw on the camera feed. 
Now, the intervention unit was told not to go in after anyone after 20 minutes had passed, but they still had time, so they rushed to the room. The guy who was telling me this said that as they approached the room, they heard voices, like a group of people trying to talk in a hushed tone. He explained that it sounded like kids in school when they were trying to whisper, but were unintentionally loud enough for others to hear. As soon as they touched the doorknob, the voices stopped in unison. Not like the conversation was over, like literally as if someone pressed a mute button in the middle of a sentence. They burst inside the empty room, which looked like no one stepped inside for years. Weapons raised. No one was there. And as they were standing there, completely silent, they hear a barely audible, wheezing sound from above. They all look up, and as they do, they freeze. The guy who told me this said that when he saw what he saw still keeps him up at night sometimes. Mrs. Rogers was standing on the ceiling like a spider on all fours, craning her head so much they thought her neck was broken. And she was looking directly at the unit upside down, wide-eyed. Spit was occasionally dropping from her mouth to the floor as she was wheezing. Her fingers had somehow mutated into long claws. Then, without any warning, Mrs. Rogers had managed to jump down on one of the team members in the blink of an eye, and gunshots ensued. He said by the time they were done shooting, two more members were down, and Mrs. Rogers had hundreds of bullet holes in her body and head, and was no longer moving. He encountered similar scenarios after that, but never came close to dying again. The building residents were evacuated from the building indefinitely the next day, and the official story given was that there was toxic fungi located within the building. The final story I'll share here is going to be one that was told by another guard who went missing later on. He was stationed at a private school, and it had a set of very strict rules they had to follow. First off, there were 10 guards in total in each shift, and each team were assigned to a classroom. Their job was to count all the students after the classes were over. Should any of the students go missing, they were to call HQ immediately. Now comes the weird part. One day, the guard who told me this story counts all of the kids in class, and the final number doesn't add up. Instead of 32 students, he has 33. He counts a few times to make sure, and when the number is confirmed as 33, he tells the teachers to start calling on them by name and separating them from the group one by one. The teacher does so, calling each and every student, but when they're done, there are no surpluses. The list showed 32, and 32 were called on, and yet 33 students were in the classroom. They couldn't tell who the extra student was, even when the guard was watching them like a hawk to make sure none of them would sneak into the group of the called on kids while they weren't looking. Baffled and unsure what to do, the guys tell the teacher to keep an eye on them while he contacts HQ. Already feeling silly for contacting the higher ups over an extra student rather than a missing one, he expected HQ to scold him for calling about something like that, but when he says he has an extra student who just popped up, chuckling at the absurdity of the situation, the person on the other end of the line suddenly goes silent. She asks him to repeat what he said, and when he does, the woman tells him to get the teacher out of there, lock the classroom immediately, and radio everyone else to do the same at once. He does so, and only minutes later the intervention unit arrives, escorting the guards out of there. He said he had no idea what happened next, but when he returned to the school the next day for his shift, everything seemed to be normal. No one really knows what the company is dealing with here. Not even intervention was told what these encounters are, since it seems to be a very strict need-to-know basis. One thing's for sure though, when I hear some of these stories from other guards, I realize how lucky I got to run into some of these creatures and live to tell the tale. This is Kinetic Symphony. If you've enjoyed this narrated story, please subscribe and like the video to help me grow. Thank you.